Today we have the first app critique of a series that I'm starting on this channel and the app we're going to critique is Depop. Depop is absolutely one of my favorite apps because whenever I can I tend to buy secondhand clothing because you know it's more affordable, it's sustainable and Depop make it super fun because uh, you can actually buy from people you follow on social media or you know maybe they have your same style, uh, size. I don't necessarily use Depop to sell my stuff, I personally prefer donating my old clothes to local charities but you know you can use it to make extra cash and get rid of your old clothes. What's better than that? But first, I want to quickly tell you what an app critique is in case uh, you are new to this expression. So, app critique is essentially an exercise used by designers uh, to evaluate their product thinking, design skills, and ability to give feedback on their peers' work. But ultimately, companies use this exercise during the interview process as a way to select the participants uh, that can better understand how products are designed, what goes beyond them, and things like that. So, grab yourself a cup of tea, coffee or whatever drink you like because we are gonna do a lot of shopping today. I want to kick off by briefly discussing what Depop is. So Depop is an online marketplace platform that allows people to sell and buy their clothes, accessories or any sorts of things but mostly clothes and I believe most users are women aged between 18 and maybe 40 plus and people love Depop because it makes uh, secondhand uh, clothes cool. Um, there are many reasons why someone would want to use Depop. For example, there is an item they want to buy but it's too expensive full price so they want to get it cheaper or um, if I think about myself like also ethical reasons can be can be a thing like um, if you prefer to shop sustainable from sustainable brands or just secondhand clothes Depop is a great option. Second we want to focus on what problem the app is solving for the users so the main problems could be you know, give a new life to your unwanted uh, clothes uh, and also make more money on the side and uh, it also makes fashion more affordable and sustainable for those who are into, you know, these things. <laughs> then I want to pick up a, a common task that users might have in the app. So I can think about uh, buying clothes or selling clothes and since I don't sell clothes on Depop, I'm going to focus on uh, the purchase experience and this will help us just focus on one user flow and one problem to solve at a time because if I was describing the whole app, I think this session will be like um, three hours long. Now, after giving a little overview of the app, we're gonna dive deep into the app critique and uh, I wanna touch on three main points and you can think about it like as an iceberg where at the top you have the visible layer, which is the aesthetic. So we are talking about uh, the visual design, motion, uh, sounds, uh, touch. And then there are the invisible layers, so like the functional and uh, the strategic layers. And um, the functional is more like the information architecture and the interaction design, whereas the strategic is like uh, why the app exists and what problem is it solving, like what is the business strategy here. So with that in mind, for the purpose of this uh, app critique, I will be focusing on uh, one user flow, which is the purchase experience. So as I enter the page, um, I can see that the interface is already populated by many images, which um, maybe like the reason why they did it was uh, because they wanted from the first moment, they wanted to give users um, a collection of like images, uh, items, uh, kind of like a mood board to inspire them. So let's describe what we see on the page. Um, I see my suggested uh, items, um, then my likes, uh, so the things that I've saved in the past, uh, and my recently viewed items. Uh, one of them is a Pokemon card. Uh, I save it because it's just it's super random to find like a Pokemon card in Depop. Yeah, here we uh, I can talk a little bit about uh, the information architecture, so why they put this section at the top. Maybe they noticed that users are more likely to buy what's recommended to them and this makes me think that their algorithm are so powerful that they, they feel confident, right? Like they know what you like. They know better than you. Um, that's why they decided to put 
the recommended items at the top instead of you know the things that you like um, or that you recently viewed from a visual perspective we have um, a button here see all and if i click on it um, i'm taken to this page and i guess this is like infinite scrolling and the reason could be you know they don't want you to stop they, they want you to get addicted by the scrolling, like until you find the item that you want. They don't want to limit your research. So let's describe a bit this page. There are two columns and the reason could be they want to show you different items in one page. And I'm thinking about like Instagram where you have like each feed uh, takes the whole screen. But here we have two columns. Maybe the reason could be they want you to see uh, clothes uh, together so that maybe you buy that uh, skirt uh, with your top. Um, and the most important things we see in each, uh, in each box is the size and the price, which I guess, you know, like they're the most important things we want to know. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to buy something. Um, let's see, what can we buy? Um, I like pretty much anything, but this top um, is quite nice. Now let's describe uh, this page. So one thing that is quite interesting here is that the icons at the bottom are not, uh, are different from uh, these icons uh, here just below the image. And this makes me think like why we didn't embrace the same style. Um, it's sort of like bothering me. I guess if I was designing this app, I will probably choose the same style. The main actions are the like. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. Oh, comments. Um, or you can save it as well. And that you can message the person. We have these uh, pills. Uh, um, which is quite interesting, like um, I don't understand why they're all white and one is green. I guess, you know, like they want to indicate the color, but I would probably make um, all the others like a different color than white because that is confusing. Um, let's scroll down. So from like a UI perspective, uh, a lot is happening on this page. The main call to action uh, to me feels like this buy with Apple Pay because it's a lot bigger than uh, add to bag and make an offer, the buttons, um, those, these buttons here. And then just below we have this um, uh, all in app purchase are covered by buyer protection, which at first impression, I thought it was a button and then I realized it's just like a static thing. I guess it's good because it builds, it helps the user build like trust and uh, maybe it's designed especially for those new users who have never used the app, this app, then like you can see more inspirations. But now let's go ahead and add this cute little top um, in my bag. Okay, there was like a little uh, animation going on, which I really like. I think that like overall Depop does a great job um, with motion design, like the animations are very sleek. Like when you move from one screen to another and everything is like uh, floating uh, really nicely together. Now I'm gonna click on my basket. This, this layout is very interesting because um, it makes you want to add more items. Uh, like I just won't be stopped, right? And then um, I see this message saying, I want more item for free shipping. And uh, this is how they want you to buy even more. I think it's a very clever pattern. Um, and it's something that I haven't seen in other, uh, you know, like e-commerce stores. Okay, so I'm gonna click here and add something else because I want the free shipping. So I'm gonna buy this beautiful dress, which, which is quite expensive, but you know, let's get it. I should have selected size eight, but okay. So this part, like the first uh, block, feels more like complete, like you're ready for the checkout. Whereas if I move here, they, they, again, they make me want to buy more stuff. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead with the checkout. One thing I need to add here is how can I remove something from my basket? Um, so the way to do it is to click on edit. And from here, you can delete your bundle or delete the item. 
let's delete this. Um, I actually don't understand, like, if something has been sold, why we don't remove it straight away? Like, what's the reason for it? I cannot buy it anymore. So I'm going ahead and delete it. I also don't need this one. Okay. Um, from this interface, I can uh, click on the name of the person that is selling uh, the item. Um, which I think is good because, you know, like if you want to see more products or you want to just verify is a real person, you have the option and you can click on the items if you change your mind, which I think is a good feature. Now I'm going to press checkout. Um, this is like the last screen before uh, you can commit to the payment. I'm going to go to the bottom. Okay. It feels like Apple Pay is their favorite uh, uh, payment method. Um, and I'm not sure why, maybe it's more secure. And then we have a final call to action. And just above, uh, we have this like little text um, that is telling us that everything is protected. And uh, I guess this, like the business decision here is that, um, especially if you're like a first time user, you, you're not familiar with Depop, you want to trust them, right? Like um, if something goes wrong, uh, the person doesn't exist, they just want your money, you're going to get refunded. Um, and I think it's great that we have this. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and buy it because um, honestly, I don't need more clothes in my life, okay? I don't even leave this house. So this is the experience of purchasing an item on Depop. But um, you can also talk about uh, the main tasks and secondary tasks like uh, you can like an item, you can save it, you can make an offer, like there are infinite ways uh, this uh, purchase experience uh, can happen and um, if you want to you can also like focus on one specific user like um, for me I knew what I was looking for so it was easier for me to find uh, that item but there are users like um, I don't know maybe they don't know what they're looking for they just want to get inspired so we're gonna go on Depop start scrolling um, looking at stuff and uh, when we find something we like maybe they're gonna buy it or they're gonna make an offer and um, even in that case the experience would be completely different uh, uh, from mine um, so I think it's also it's always important to keep that in mind and uh, while you describe your user flow always remember to ask yourself why like why we are doing this why the button is there and both in terms of aesthetic functionality a strategy just like try to keep everything in mind and don't worry if um, you don't have the answer like uh, we haven't designed this product so we don't really know what's happening we are doing our best to guess you know why designers have taken these decisions and you can go as deep as you want but just keep an eye on the time because i've been doing uh, quite a few design critique sessions some were like 50 minutes other were 50 minutes so based on uh, how much time available you have you can decide you know how many user flows uh, you want to take your interviewers through or if you want to describe the app as a whole. Uh, but yeah, this is like my experience on Depop. If I, if I was describing this in maybe like a couple of years, uh, I'm sure I would have a lot more to say, but this is where I'm at. Another thing you can do to help you during the design critique session is to write a list of bullet points of things you want to mention so that you make sure you cover everything. And I think it's really important to just like do a bit of preparation up front. And uh, if you can choose uh, an app for the critique, just uh, choose the one that you're most familiar with, something that you use every day, uh, as opposed to, you know, like an app that you like, but you don't really use. So that was it. This is our first, uh, technically the second app critique of this channel, but as I said, I'm planning to do more moving forward. Today we looked at Depop, but let me know in the comments which apps you would like me to review because, you know, I want you to have input on this channel. I want you to decide what kind of content uh, you want to see here. So yeah, let me know which apps you want me to review. I know that if you're not familiar with Depop, maybe it was a bit boring. Um, or it was boring anyway, but after this video, you're gonna go on Depop and find uh, that jumper you really love for super cheap, and you're gonna be happy about this video. 
Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in and sticking to the end. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and turn on notifications so that you get notified every time I upload a new video, which I'm trying to do more consistently. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!